Randa la rusha kaliyara sobra handa. Alleluia. 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 I welcome you all in the name of the Lord. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for yielding to the Spirit of God to click on this live broadcast. Welcome, Mr. Tyon Judge. Thank you for always being around. Thank you for always being there. Thank you for being a part of this wonderful family. Welcome to our replay viewers. Welcome to all those who are going to come later and join us. Thank you so much. Thank you, Swaggy D, for joining us. We are glad to have you again tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. Hallelujah. I welcome you all in the mighty name of Jesus. I welcome you all in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for being a part of this session. Thank you for being a part of this session. Thank you so much for being a part of this session. Thank you, John Harris, for joining us. Thank you, Alessia, for joining Alessia, for joining us. Thank you so much. Please come in. Let me know where you are joining us from. Thank you guys so much for joining us. I welcome you all in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I can assure you one thing. You are about to be blessed in no small way. I can assure you that you are about to be blessed in no small way. Because I didn't come here on my own. I came here in the name of the Lord. And when two or three are gathered in his name, he is there present in their midst, in their midst, and they are supposed to thank you for joining us from North Carolina, USA. Thank you so much. Gaza Brunda La Rusha Kaliana La Siana. Kalizu Branda La Rusha Kaliana La Rasihanda La Rushaka. I don't know about you, but God said tonight is a night of healing and deliverance. I don't know about you, but I have I, I, I have had some wounds somewhere. I have had some wounds in my past experiences. I've had some things to deal that I've struggled to deal with in my life. And I certainly need a touch from God. And I believe if you are here tonight, it's because you need a touch from God. Some of us have been held back by some things that hurt us really bad. And we've got, I, I need people who are here today to say, God, we need a touch from you. God, I have wanted so badly to move on, but something keeps on pulling me back. There is a pain that keeps pulling me back. I am here because I need someone that wants to that that wants to tell God I need a touch. If you are that kind of person, then, then I'm here for you tonight. God says this night is about to be healing and deliverance session. It's about to be a healing and a deliverance session. It's about to be a healing and a deliverance session for somebody. God is about to heal that pain. God is about to heal those finances. God is about to heal that broken heart. God is about to mend that heart and bring it back for you to be whole. God says I should tell someone tonight is the night that you are about to encounter Jehovah Rapha who is our healer. You are about to be healed in those dark places. I don't know if there is someone here that has some issues in their life and has some places in your life where you don't want someone to touch, where you don't want anyone to go to, where you don't want to even hear about the story. There is an aspect of your life that is so dark that no one knows about, but it keeps on hurting you. Kala zobranda la rusha kaliana la rasiana baruza. Liza Brunda La Rusha Handa Balarasiana. John Harris, you are about to have a touch. You are about to be healed in the name of Jesus. I came here for you. Kali Zubranda La Rusha Handa Balarasiana. Father, we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. You are about to be touched. God says tonight is a night of encounter. He's about to meet you exactly at the point of your need. You are about to be grateful to God that you yielded to the leading of the spirit and you stick around and you stick around till the end. Lord, we thank you. 
Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for your presence in our midst. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for your presence in our midst. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Jehovah Rapha, we thank you. Jehovah Rapha, we thank you. The healer, we thank you. Kala zoa na 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 sihanda balarusha kaliana rasiana. Kia raso branda la rusha kaliana raza brahanda la rosa. Lizu brasha handa balara rasiana balarusha kaliana. There is power in the name of Jesus. Yahweh. Yahweh. There is healing in the name of Jesus. Yahweh. Yahweh. There's deliverance in the name of Jesus. Yahweh. Yahweh. Chains are broken in the name of Jesus. Yahweh, 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 Yahweh. There is power in the name of Jesus. Yahweh, Yahweh. No limitation in the name of Jesus. Yahweh, Yahweh. Chains are broken in the name of Jesus. Yahweh, oh Yahweh. Yahweh, 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 Yahweh. Yahweh, Yahweh, we arise in the name of Jesus, Yahweh, oh Yahweh, no more broken hearts in the name of Jesus, Yahweh, Yahweh, we are healed in the name of Jesus, Yahweh, oh Yahweh, Yahweh. Yahweh, 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 Yahweh. Touch my body, my soul, and spirit. Lord, please breathe on me. Touch my body, my soul, and my spirit, and breathe on me. Lord, touch our bodies, touch our souls, and our spirit. Please breathe on us. Breathe on us. Breathe on us. Breathe on us. As we look to you for life. Lord, please breathe on us. As we look to you for life. I don't know if there's someone that needs a touch from God tonight. Just begin to worship him. Begin to thank him in advance of what he's about to do. Be in the mood of worship right now. Touch my body, my soul, and my spirit. Lord, please breathe on me. Touch our bodies, our souls, and our spirit, and breathe on us. Touch our bodies, our souls, and our spirit. Lord, please breathe on us. Breathe on us. Breathe on us. Breathe on us. As we look to you for life. Breathe on us. As we look to you for life. So I affect my life and breathe on me. As I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. 
As I look to you for life, affect our lives, breathe on us, God. As we look to you for life, affect our lives and breathe on us. As we look to you for life, affect our lives and breathe on us, God. As we look to you this night, affect our lives and breathe on us. As we look to you this night, affect our lives, breathe on us, God. As we look to you tonight, affect our lives and breathe on us. As we look to you tonight, light me up. Light my life, light me up like a fountain. Light me up, light my life, light me up like a candle. Light me up, light my life, light me up like a candle. Light me up, light my life, light me up like a candle. Please light me up. I'm tired of this darkness. Light me, Lord, like a candle. Light us up. Light those dark places. Light us up like a candle. Light us up. Light those dark places. Light us up like a candle. Light us up. Lord, light our lives. Light us up like a candle. Light us up. Light our lives. Kayana la raso brana la rusha kaliana la rasiana. Kiza brunda la rusha kaliana la rasiana balaruza. Mr. Charles, we thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for joining us. We are privileged to have you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Right now, let's begin to talk to God. Say, God, prepare my heart for this session. Prepare my heart. Father, I don't want to leave this session the way I came. I don't want to carry this same burden back tonight. Father, may I have peace. May I have joy. May I leave this session with peace and joy. May I leave this person with gladness. This, 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 this session with gladness. May I leave this session with fulfillment. May I not leave this place the same. The Bible says no one comes into the prayer presence of God and goes back the same way they came. May this be your testimony that after this session, you are about to say, thank God I clicked to that video. Thank God I connected myself to what God was doing. Begin to tell God, prepare my heart. Father, if you are about to touch one person tonight, let it be me. Pray this selfish prayer. If you are about to encounter just one person, let it be me. If you are about to reach out to one person, let it be me. If you are about to heal one person, let it be me. Kayana la rusha handa balarasi ana malaruza. Lizubra shahanda balarasi bra handa rasobra. Karasuana na nasi ana malarusha kaliana. Lizubra handa la rusha kaliana. Sobra Hanna, Karisha Branna La Rosa, Hanna La Rosa. God, if you are about to touch one life, let it be me. God, if you are about to heal or deliver one person, let it be me. May I leave this place with extraordinary peace. May I leave this session with extraordinary peace. By your word tonight, Lord, may I encounter peace. By your word tonight, may I encounter your healing. By your word tonight, may I encounter deliverance. Father, touch me. Touch me. Touch me tonight. Touch me tonight. Kala zubranda la rusha handa balarasiana baruza. Kiana bala rosha hana manana nasi brahanda la rosa. Karisha brahanda la rosa brahanda la rasiana. Iana barusha handa bala rasiana. Kia zoba yanana. Kia zoba yanana. Kala zubra handa la rusha kaliana. Kara zubra handa la rusha. God, I'm interceding for all those that need a touch tonight. For all that, that need healing tonight. For all whose hearts have been broken and need for you to mend them and bring them back together. For all those that need rest restoration, 
for all those whose happiness has been tampered with. Father, Lord, I'm interceding. You say we know not how to pray. May the Spirit make an intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. Lord, even as I pray, begin to touch them, begin to heal them, begin to restore them. Begin to deliver them. Begin to mend the heart, begin to mend the heart. Let peace begin to touch somebody. Let your power rest upon somebody from the crown of your head to the from their head to the sole of their feet. Let your power rest on somebody. Liza Bruna La Rushaka. Liana Rasiana. Liana Rasiana. Liana Rasiana. Liana Sobrahanda La Rusha. Kaliza Bruna La Rusha. I don't know who had lost their peace. God says, receive it in the name of Jesus. Let your peace, the peace of the Lord, be restored in the name of Jesus. I don't know who lost their joy. God says, let that joy be restored in the name of Jesus. God says, it's a new dawn. It's a new dawn. It's a new dawn. You're about to have a turnaround. Your heart is about to be mean, to be mended. Your heart is about to be mended. God says he's turning around everything. He is turning around everything. He is turning around everything. God says no more sleepless night. No more painful night. No more crying all night. God says he has cried. I am talking to someone. You people think you are okay. They think you are okay because you talk and you smile. But you carry a pain in the inside. You carry a pain in your heart that no one can understand. And you don't even bother telling people about it because you don't want to throw a pity party. But in the inside of you, there is a burden. In the inside of you, there is a pain. I am here for you. God says be at peace. God says be at peace. God says that pain is taken away in the mighty name of Jesus. God says that pain is taken away in the mighty name of Jesus. It's a time for restoration. All that the canker worm stole, all that that guy took, all that that lady took, all the pain that was caused, God says there is about to be a restoration. A restoration, a restoration in the mighty name of Jesus. Kayana la rusha handa barala siana manana siana. Kila zobra shahanda balarala sibra handa la rusa. Li zubra shahanda manana na zoba yana suana rusa. Li zubra shakaliana la sobra handa. Kayana na 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 na. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for that which you are about to do. Thank you for your word, oh God, that we are about to listen to. Thank you, Lord, because I'm just a vessel in your hands. When I open my mouth, you feel it. Thank you because you're about to use me and you're about to minister to somebody. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for every life that is about to be touched here. As many as are connected to this live broadcast, Father, thank you because you are about to touch them. And as many as are going to come later and replay, Father, thank you because you are about to touch them. You are about to give them a life-changing encounter. Thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. Afternoon, morning wherever you are, what, whatever time it is of the day. Thank you so much. I'm confident that you are about to be blessed in no small way. We are about to share the word of God. And I know in my God is about to minister to somebody. God is about to talk to somebody. They, 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 I, I may not be sure about many things, but one thing I'm sure of is that certainly when I open my mouth, God feels it. So I know that I am about to be an, a, a vessel in God's hands and I'm about to minister to you in no small way. Please just stick around. Hallelujah. We are about to share the word of God. I told us that God sent me here for healing and deliverance. For those who have some things they are dealing with, you've been hurt. 
You have a pain that you carry around and no one understands. And you act like everything is okay. You act like you have all intact. But sometimes you go to bed and you cry all night. And people don't understand. Some of you, you may not, you may not necessarily cry. But there is a pain that happens. Something happens in your life or you've had some, 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 some sequence of experiences, some patterns in your life that have put you in this place, in this place of low self-esteem, in this place of lack of confidence, in this place where you just are not comfortable, you are not happy. And people don't even understand you are not happy because you can mask it so well and no one understands. And you have some fears that keep gripping you when you are in the dark place, when you are alone, when, 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 when you are all alone, when you are back to yourself, back in your room, there are fears that you have. There are desires that you have. There are things that you want, but the fear is more than. God says there is someone here your next level is just before you but you cannot see it because there is something holding you back maybe that kingdom spouse is just before you god has been displaying them before you but you can't see it because you have been so hurt in time past that you feel you 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 you, you are so afraid of everything you are so afraid of everyone when you see someone you feel like this one is about to hurt me again god says your kingdom spouse has been around you but you can't even see it because you have been hurt but the good news is there's about to be healing. Hallelujah. There's about to be healing. The entrance of God's word brings light and understanding to the simple. The word of God is spirit and it's life. It brings life to every dead situation. It brings life to every seemingly dead situation. In the name of Jesus. We are going to read from 2 Samuel chapter 13. If you have your Bible open to 2 Samuel chapter 13. 2 Samuel chapter 13 is quite a long chapter. And I'm trying to look at the possibility of us just... But then there is need for us to just read through this, this story so that we know exactly what we are talking about. So it's a long passage. I'm reading from verse 1 to verse 20. So if you have your Bible, you can get it. You can follow me through your Bible. If you don't, then you can as well just follow me as I read. Second Samuel, please someone, Mr. George, can you please type that down? Thank you so much. Second Samuel chapter 13 from verse 1 to 20. And I read from the King James Version. It says, and it came to pass after this, that Absalom, the son of David, had a fair sister whose name was Tamar. And Amnon, the son of David, loved her. And Amnon was vexed that he fell sick for his sister Tamar, for she was a virgin. And Amnon thought it hard for him to do anything to her. But Amnon had a friend whose name was Jonadab, the son of Shimea, David's brother. And Jonadab was a very subtle man. And he said unto him, Why art thou being the king's son, laying from day to day. Will thou not tell me? And Amnon said unto him, I love Tamar, my brother's, my brother Absalom's sister. And Jonadab said unto him, Lay thee down on thy bed, and make thyself sick. And when thy father cometh to see thee, say unto him, I pray thee, let my sister Tamar come, and give me meat, and dress the meat, and dress the meat in my sight, that I may see it, and eat it at her hand. So Amnon lay down and made himself sick. And when the king was, was come to see him, Amnon said unto the king, I pray thee, let Tamar, my sister, come and make me a couple of cakes in my sight that I may eat of her hand, at her hand. Then David sent home to Tamar, saying, Go now to thy brother Amnon's house and dress him meat. So Tamar went to her brother Amnon's house, and he was laid down, and she took flour and kneaded it, and made cakes in his sight, and did bake the cakes. And she took a pan and poured them out before him, but he refused to eat. And Amnon said, have, have out all men from me. And they went out every man from him. And Amnon said unto Tamar, bring the meat into the chamber, that I may eat of thy hand. And Tamar took the cake which she had made and brought them into the chamber and 
to Amnon her brother. And when she had brought them unto him to eat, he took her, it, he took hold of her and said unto her, Come lie with me, my sister. And she answered, and she answered him, Nay, my brother, do not force me, for no such thing ought to be done in Israel. Do not doubt this, do not doubt this fully. And I whither shall and I, whither shall I cause my shame to go? And for and as for thee, thou shalt be as one of the fools of Israel. Now therefore I pray thee, speak unto the king, for he will not withhold me from thee. How be it he would not hearken unto her voice, but being stronger than she, forced her and lay with her. He took advantage of her because he was stronger than she was. All she wanted to do was help. All she wanted to do was to be a good sister. She did her best to take care of her brother who was sick, but she was raped. Verse 16, verse 15. Then Amnon hated her exceedingly, so that the hatred wherewith he hated her was greater than the love wherewith he had loved her. And Amnon said unto her, Arise, be gone. And she said unto him, There is no cause. This evil of sending me away is greater than the other, than the other that thou didst unto me. But he would not listen to her. He would not hearken unto her. Then he called his servants and, and ministered unto him and said, Put now this woman out from me and bolt the door after me, after her. And she had her garments of diverse color upon her. For with such robes were the king's daughters that were virgins apparelled. Then his servants brought, brought her out and bolted the door after her. And Tamar put ashes on her head and rented her garment of diverse colors that was on her and laid her hands on her head and went on crying. And Absalom, her brother, said unto her, Had Amnon thy brother been with thee? But hold now thy peace, my sister. He is thy brother. Regard not this thing. So Tamar remained desolate in her brother Absalom's house. Verse 20. The ending of verse 20 is so heartbreaking. He says Tamar remained desolate. Tamar remained desolate. To be desolate means to be lost in shame. It means to be lonely. It means to be comfortless. It means to be forsaken. Tamar remained forsaken. Tamar remained comfortless. Tamar remained desolate. What was her crime? Bad things do happen to good people. Life happens. I don't know if there's someone here that has really been hurt. And you never did anything to deserve what, what came to you. You never did anything wrong to deserve that kind of hurt. But you were betrayed and you were hurt. Bad things do happen to good people. The Bible says the rain falls on the just and the unjust, and the sun shines on the just and the unjust. Bad things do happen to good people. Tamar was a good girl. Tamar was a virgin. Tamar's, Tamar's purity was seen in her apparel. The Bible says she was, she was dressed in, 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 in royal robes, in a royal robe, in a royal garment. Meaning she was pure. She was so pure that everyone could see it and know. That's why Amnon had difficulties in from, from, the, from the onset to get to her because Amnon knew that she was pure. She was a virgin. Bad things do happen to good people. Welcome, Karin. We are grateful to have you. Thank you for always coming back. Thank you for always being a part of our broadcast. I trust you are about to be blessed. Bad things happen to good people. Sometimes, most often, when some things happen to us, you ask yourself, God, where did I go wrong? What did I do to deserve this? Sometimes you really didn't do anything. You were just trying to be a good fiancé. You are just trying to do the best that you possibly can. You tried your best to be the best lady that that guy has ever come across. You tried your best to be. Kayana lara sobra handa la rusha. Kiyana lara sobra handa la rusha brunda la rasiana. 
I don't know if there's someone you tried your best. You put in your best to make that relationship work. You put in your best to please that guy, to please that lady. You, you, you stretch yourself. You accommodated more than you normally would. You tolerated no, more than you normally would. But at the end of the day, they still left you. At the end of the day, they still hurt you. At the end of the day, they still cheated on you. At the end of the day, that engagement was still broken. Bad things do happen to good people. Life happens. Shit happens in life. Kayana la rosa brahanda la rosa kaliana. Remember, we are here to mend those broken hearts. We are here for healing, and we are here to have a new dawn. We are here to let the to bury the past and bury all the bad experiences and bury all the difficult moments and move forward to a glorious future. God says He's coming here tonight to mend someone's heart. He's coming here tonight to bless somebody. Thank you, Mr. Awara, for joining us. We are blessed to have you. Thank you so much. Bad things sometimes do happen to good people. So when you see someone going through some things, don't ask. The first question you should ask shouldn't be, what did they do wrong? Sometimes they didn't do anything wrong. Tamar just wanted to help the sister. Tamar just wanted to be the, the brother, sorry. Tamar just wanted to be a good sister. Wanted to just help his brother out. Little did he know that the brother had another agenda. And, and, and let's not forget the father. I can imagine how the father is going to feel with this. The father just wanted to care. Just wanted to meet the needs and the desires of his son. The son requested. He used the father to request. So imagine how bad the father must have felt. Because he must have felt like he is responsible. Just the same way, maybe someone recommended you into that relationship. And right now, your heart has been shattered. And every time they look at you, they feel like they are responsible for this. They are responsible for this. They caused this to happen. Bad things really do happen to good people. Rain falls on the just and the unjust. And sun shines on the just and the unjust. Bad things do happen to good people. When you see someone going through an issue, all the best you can do for them is pray for them. Don't go judging and asking who did what. Pray that if it was their fault, let God give, bring it to their consciousness that way they faltered and let God help them to change and become better people. Bad things happen to good people. Hallelujah. We are looking at Tamar. At the end of the day, Tamar goes back home and she is desolate. She becomes lost in shame. She lost her identity. She lost her dignity. Everything that she had guarded with so much jealousy, she had guarded with so much love, she, the, the personality she builds for herself in just one day, out of her good will, she was just trying to be a good girl. She lost everything. She becomes desolate. She goes into hiding. Kaya zabaru shakaliana la sobra handa la rasi handa. Lizu branda la ru shakaliana la rasi handa bala ruza brunda la ruza. Liana rasiana mala ru shakalina. Kariza brunda na sehanda manazua. Kara sobra handa la ru shaka. God says healing is coming to someone tonight. Healing is coming to someone today. Healing is coming to you today in the mighty name of Jesus. What happened has happened. The question now is how do I get past this experience? How do I get past this rejection? You know when you are raped, when you are raped there is a rejection. It, 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 there, there is a stigma that rests with you. There is a stigma that lives with you. Most of the people who were raped never get past that experience. They, they, it's hard for them to ever love again. It's hard for them to ever be loved. It's hard for them to ever get married. It's hard until they encounter genuine deliverance. It's hard because they are stuck in that, in that experience. They are stuck and all they need to get out of there is a touch from God. It's healing from God. Thank God I came here today in the power of the Spirit to touch those dark places that no one knows about. Sometimes you don't need to tell someone I was wrecked. 
You don't need to tell someone I was hurt so badly. But you've been carrying around a stench from the dead relationship. You've been carrying around a stench from what happened in time past. You've been carrying around a stench that makes it hard for people to love you. They look at you and you are so beautiful. You are so handsome. But the rejection is just so much. The pain of what happens is just so much. And now it is hard. They will come to you. They'll come. Suitors come. It's not like suitors don't come. They come but for some reason they feel this stench around you and they feel a rejection because you have been rejecting rejected in time past you are you are you are unconsciously rejecting others the people that that god sends towards you are being rejected because you've been rejected in time past the problem is until you heal completely you will not be able to love again until you heal completely, you cannot effectively embrace your next level. Until you heal completely, you cannot effectively embrace your next level. You cannot become the best of who God created you to be if you are stuck in history. God says, I know. It doesn't matter what happened in time past. There is a brighter future ahead of you. The plans that God has for you, they are greater than, the, than what the devil tried to do. The plans that God has for you, they are greater than what the devil tried to do. The, the, the God says, I should tell someone, the plans that, are, that he has for you tomorrow are greater than everything that the enemy ever tried to do. They are greater. Don't hold yourself back. Do not be stopped in time in, in history. What God has for your future is greater than what the devil did in your past. The devil is going to come to try to, 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 to remind you of the pain and try to re remind you that you were, you were once rejected and you are about to be rejected again. Tell the devil that what God has for my future is greater than rejection. God says, he, he, he says, can a mother forget their child? He says, even if a mother does, he, he, he cannot forget you. He says, your, hand, your name has been engraved in the palm of his hand. He cannot forget you. Do you know what that means? In other words, God is telling you that he just could not write your name in a book. It wasn't sufficient. He has to write it in his hands. When he's washing his hands, he sees your name and he remembers. Oh, how I love Oleg. When he's watching, washing his hands, when he looks at his hands, he wants to trace one of his hands, he sees Swaggy D and he says, oh, how I love this, my son. How I love this, my daughter. God says he cannot forget you. He cannot forget you. He has been with you all along. He has been with you all along. And he says, it's time. He cannot bear you being hurt anymore. He cannot bear you being rejected. He cannot bear you being, going around like you have no one. He says, even if the world turns their back at you, you have him. Be rest assured that he is there for you. Kala Zabrahanda Larushaka. Kazibara Rasiana. How do I walk past this heartbreak? How do I walk past this heartbreak? How do I heal? How do I get to that place where I go to bed and I am not awake all night? And I am not in tears all night. How do I get to that place? Where I am not afraid to start over. Where I am not afraid of a new relationship. Where I am not afraid to step into that next level. With that new guy, with that new lady. How do I get past this rejection? How do I go past this experience? We are going to look at the steps. Four main things. Four steps are involved. What God expects of you. God says first things first. Know that he is with you. He has been with you. He was with you. He has been with you and he is with you right now. And he will continue to be with you. Be assured that God is with you. Sometimes we feel like the bad things that happened to us, they happened because God was not with us. Because maybe we sinned. Because we went, God says he has been with you. And know that he is with you. And whenever God is with you, it doesn't matter what you go through. It, does, it will not kill you. He says, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you will fear no evil because God is with you. His, he says his rod and his staff, they will comfort you. So the valley that is meant to be the valley of death, the valley that the enemy meant for it to be the valley of death, because God is with you, it is going to 
be the value of the shadow of death. What kills in it has been taken away. The sting of death has been taken away. Hallelujah. God says the good news is you have been going through it. It wasn't your destination. You, were, you, you have been going through it. And congratulations, you, you have gone through. You are at the other side. You are emerging at the other side. Congratulations, you are at the other side. You succeeded. You went through it. God says, I should tell you, congratulations, you went through it. Congratulations, you went through it. Others have gone through heartbreak and, and they've committed suicide. God said, that was not your portion because he has been with you. And congratulations, you have gone through that valley of the shadow of death and you have gone through. You are emerging at the other side. You are emerging at the other end. You are emerging at the other side. Side. Yes, yes, Oleg, you went through it. You went through it. You went through it because God was with you. And guess what? He is still with you. He says, even when you go through the fire, I am with you. Even when you go through the water, I am with you. So the fire will not consume you and the water will not drown you. But you know, sometimes God did not say in that scripture in Isaiah, he did not say the, the fire will not warm you. Sometimes the fire is going to warm you. I know how bad it, it feels to be heartbroken because I have experienced it. I know how bad it feels to be rejected. I know how bad it feels to be, to, to, to be betrayed. But then the good news is God being with you, you might feel the warmth of the fire and you might get wet from the water. But the assurance is the fire will not consume you and the water will not drown you. Hallelujah. God says he has been with you. He has been with you. Tell yourself, God has been with me. God has been the source of my strength. God has been with me. So this is this has not been my destination. This will not be my destination. I am emerging on the other side. I am emerging. Begin to confess that to yourself. I am emerging on the other side. I am emerging stronger. I am emerging better. I am emerging stronger. I am emerging better. Hallelujah. 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 That was the first point. Second point. Second point. Kala Zobranda Larushaka. Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. Apostle Paul says, For we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and are called according to his purpose. Apostle Paul says, We know, we are confident that all things work together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. The question is, do you love God? Are you called according to his purpose? Then even this too is working together for your good. No matter how bad it seems, God is using it to work together things for your good. You didn't know that you had so much capacity until this storm hit you. You didn't know that you could contain so much until this storm hit you. You didn't know that you could have so much love for people until this storm hit you. You didn't know that you could pray so much until this storm hit you. You didn't know that you were such a man of faith or such a woman of faith until this bad experience hit you. You didn't know that you could be so dependent and reliable on God until this hit you. God says he is working all of this around for he's turning it around and he's working all things for your good. He's working all things for your good. It was not God says but it is about to be God used. It was not God says but it is God used. God says he didn't send it. He didn't cause them to hurt you but he is using it to work some things out for your good. In uh, At the end of the day, it's not just about the pain. It is the lesson you learn. Maybe you learn not to trust people so easily. Maybe you learn not to give yourself out to everyone. Maybe you learn to first seek the face of God and ask God, God, is this your will for me? Is this your will for me? So the, 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 the lessons that you learn from that bad experience are a blessing to you. That, that is God using that to turn all things around, to walk all things around for your good. So that when you, re, when you encounter the, the next one, you are going to be grateful to God. Somebody God says, the reason why you went through that is so that when you see the right person, you acknowledge, you appreciate them. You'll be, you'll be able to recognize and know that this, this one was given to me by God. God is working all things out for your good. Do you love God? Are you in line of, with, with his purpose? Even if you are not in line with his purpose, it's not too late. You can still align yourself to the purpose of God. You can still align yourself to the purpose of God. 
all things are working out for your good. It doesn't matter how bad it seems. It doesn't matter how hateful it was. It doesn't matter how painful it was. But God is using it to work things out for your good. Apostle Paul didn't say that all good things work together for your good. He didn't say that all good things, all things you desire work together for your good. He said all things, all things, all things. Yes, God, even this heartbreak, yes, all things. God, even this hurt that they hurt me, yes, all all things. God, this betrayer, it hurts so much. All things. God says all things work together for your good. They are working together for your good. Even that betrayer. Even that betrayer. Yes, they left you. But thank God they left you this early. God had to allow them to deal with you this early. What if you had married them and then they treated you the way they did? Do you know what it means to be stuck with someone for the rest of your life who doesn't value you, who doesn't treat you the way you deserve to be treated? Do you know what it means to, to be stuck with someone till death do you part? Till death do us part is a very long time, you know. God used this, he's turning this around, he's working it for your good. Sometimes we've got to thank God for the bad things that happened to us. Thank him for the times when you were down. Because some of you, someone, God says, I should tell you, it was in that moment when you were down that you could know who exactly has been with you. Who exactly has been with you. I believe when Tamar was covered in shame and, 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 and desolate, in pain, there were some friends that were like, we knew this was about to happen to her. The way she had been showing off, the way she has been pulling herself as if she was the only daughter of the king. There were people that she thought were her friends that, that, that said terrible things about her. There were people that she most likely expected to console her, to be there for her, and they were the first to turn their backs on her. There were people that were happy that what happened to her happened. Sometimes the bad experiences are what we needed to open our eyes to the reality of who, so who we had around us as friends. God gave me a prophetic word earlier today. I'm still to put it up. God says you should pray for protection, not from your enemies, but from the people you trust. God said pray for protection. Not for your, from your enemies, but from the people you trust. Tamar trusted Amnon. Tamar could, could call. I, I believe that if it was another guy in town, Tamar would not have baked cake for them and entered into their room with them, trying to feed them with the cake. Tamar would never have done that. The reason why she did that wholeheartedly, without any fear, was because she trusted Amnon. God says, protect your heart. Protect your life. Pray for protection, not from your enemies, but from the people you trust. Some other person, God says your problem is that you trust, you trust too soon and you trust too much. You trust too soon and you trust too much. You easily give yourself out. You easily give yourself out. And at the end of the day, that's why you most often find yourself hurt. Hallelujah. Am I talking to somebody tonight? Am I talking to somebody? Come in, let me know you are with me. Hallelujah. The third point in this healing process. God says, lay down your burden at his feet. You've tried. You've tried to move on. You've tried to numb the pain. You've tried to get over this. But you just cannot. God says, it's time for him to take over. God says, let go and let God. Let go and let God. There are certain things we go through. And even therapy cannot heal us. Only God can heal us. God says, lay it at his feet. Lay this pain at his feet. Lay this burden at his feet. For someone, God says, don't just lay it at his feet. God says, bury it. Bury it. I have been through this. I know what it means to be hurt. I know what it means to go through pain. I had a terrible experience in my life. And I prayed to God. I, I tried getting over it. I had a difficult loss. I tried getting over it and I couldn't. I hurt. I cried. For more than a year, I was in serious pain. I cried to God for him to heal me. And, he, and, 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 and every time, I would cry and I would feel that pain. <clears throat> Excuse me. I would feel that pain. I would, but when I cry, I feel relief. But after some time, I feel the pain. It comes back. After some time, the experience comes back. After some time, the pain comes back. I was like, God, what is happening? 
And one day I went to God and I said, Father, I lay this at your feet. God told me, bury it deep. God told me, God rebuilt me. He said, I'm tired of you keeping things at my feet and picking them back up when it's convenient. God says, you've not been laying any burden at my feet. You've not been laying any pain at my feet. But you just keep it. And then when it's convenient, you pick it back up. That's what some of us have been going through. We have been keeping our burdens and our head at the master's feet. And when it's convenient, you pick it back up. You have been trying to move on. You tell yourself you've laid it at the master's feet. Until the, new, the, 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 the lady you are dating now or the guy you are dating now until they do something and then you remember what your ex did to you and the wound becomes fresh and you start comparing them. You start telling them it is the same thing. Bury it at his feet. Maybe laying has not worked for you. Bury it at his feet. Bury it at his feet. Yes, bury it at his feet so that you can move on. Beyond this hurt is a restoration. And you know the good news? God doesn't give you the same thing you lost. When he's coming back, he's coming back with a double for your trouble kind of restoration. God says double for your trouble. God says, I should tell someone, he started telling me this since yesterday. He says, I should tell someone, he is about to give you a partner that will make you know all men are not the same. That will make you know all women are not the same. God says he's about to give you a kingdom spouse that will teach you that all men are not dogs, all women are not dogs, all men are not bastards, all women are not bastards. God says he's about to give you a kingdom spouse that will make you know that indeed God still gives people husbands. God still gives people wives. God says he's about to give you a kingdom spouse that will make you know not every man, not every woman is from the devil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the last point, after laying it at the master's feet, you've got to forgive them and forgive yourself. Forgive that person that hurts you and forgive yourself. Yes, I know what they did was hurtful. I know it was so painful. I know, I know. Forgive him, forgive her, and forgive yourself. Yes, I know rejection is painful. I know it was so painful to be rejected. Yes, forgive them and forgive yourself. You know why you need to forgive them? Because of your, it is for your own sake. It's not for their sake. You are forgiving them for your own sake. You have to forgive them for your own sake. Not for their sake, for your own sake. God says, forgive them. Forgive yourself. Someone you have been blaming yourself, feeling like it, you caused this. You are responsible for this. This happened because you did this. This happened because you failed here. God says, forgive yourself. This did not happen because you caused it. Tamar, you were just being a good girl. You were just being a good sister. Forgive yourself. Forgive yourself, you did nothing wrong. You tried the best that you could to preserve that marriage. You tried the best that you could to preserve that relationship. But it still happened. Forgive yourself. Don't hold yourself responsible for what they did. You tried your best to be the best girlfriend, the best fiancé, the best wife. They still walked out on you. They still cheated on you. Forgive yourself and forgive them. Because for every time, every second that you hold them in your heart, every second that you hold the pain, you are killing yourself and you are killing your ability, your opportunities, your chances of meeting the right person. You will never meet the right person until you bury that past, until you forgive them completely. You will never effectively love another person until you forgive them for rejecting you, until you forgive them for hurting you. Because you are going to continuously see that hurt on the next person. And maybe this is the right person. This is indeed your kingdom spouse. And then if you don't forgive this, this ex of yours, you don't forgive the person that hurts you so bad, you are going to bleed on the right people that God sends your way. And they don't deserve it. And they don't deserve it. 
and they are there just to give you a happy marriage, just to give you a happy life, just to be your peace, just to give you peace and happiness. But if you don't forgive this person that hurt you, you are going to bleed on the person that God sends to you. I pray. I pray. I pray. Thank you, Pam, for joining us. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. If you don't forgive this person that hurts you, it is hard to move on when you still bear a grudge behind. It is hard for you to move on. Please do come in, let me know. When you join us, come in, let me know who is joining us and where you are joining us from so that I can welcome you and acknowledge your presence. It is hard to move on when you are hurt inside. It is hard to, to, to find another person and love genuinely. God says I should tell someone this has been the reason why you are unable to love or to be loved. Because you've not forgiven your ex. You've not forgiven that person that you trusted that betrayed you. You've not forgiven that person that hurt you. And you know the sad thing, the person moved on. Maybe they are already remarried, but you are the one who is single. Come on, isn't that adding salt to your injury? They hurt you and they moved on. And they are living happily ever after with someone else. And you are still here lamenting over the pain that they caused you. Do yourself the favor and forgive them. Let go and let God. Do yourself the favor. Bury it at the master's feet and forgive them. Move on. Pray for their good. Some of us, the, the main expression of, the, of our own forgiveness is that we have been believing God that bad things should happen to them. We have been trusting God that they will not see good. We have made negative declarations that they will not see good in this one life. After this session, please revolt back, take back those negative words and genuinely pray for God to bless them wherever they are. Thank God that he did not allow you to marry them. Thank God that he, 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 he enabled them, he allowed them to show you their true colors. Early enough. Thank God that they didn't kill you. Thank God that they didn't kill you. Look for reasons to thank God for that relationship. Because certainly the reason why you are still going through that hurt is because you have only been considering the bad things. But believe me, there is good. God worked out things for good out of that relationship, out of that bad situation. Maybe now you know you are more sensitive. You know when a guy is about to, to just play you. You know when the right person comes. You are able to identify them because of that bad relationship. There are lessons you learned. You know how to seek the face of God and how to ask God, God, is this the rightful person for me? Now you learn. That's a lesson that you learned. Everything that God allows to come your way is a blessing or a lesson. And if it is a lesson, it is still a blessing in disguise. The problem is not about the pain that we felt. The problem is what we do with that pain. The lessons. Did we learn the lessons? God says I should tell someone, don't waste your pain. Don't waste that pain. Learn the lessons that you are supposed to learn from them. You will be a big fool if you live from here and the same thing still happens to you again. Then you are a fool. Even God will call you a fool. I pray for you right now as we are rounding up. I pray for you right now. May God give you the grace to genuinely forgive in the name of Jesus. May God give you the grace to forgive those who hurt you and forgive yourself in the name of Jesus. May God give you the grace to bury that bad experience, that bad experience, that bad, that bad event, that terrible event. May God give you the grace to bury it at his feet in the name of Jesus. May God give you the grace to bury it before him in the name of Jesus, to lay it down before him in the name of Jesus. I pray that as from today, the consciousness of the presence of God with you is never going to leave your mind. It's never going to leave, your, you, to leave you. You will be forever conscious that God is with you. I pray that as from today, God is touching all those dark places. He's shining forth his light in those dark places in the name of Jesus. God is shining forth his light in those dark places in the name of Jesus. God is touching that place.
place that hurts so much. God says he is the master. He, 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 he is the molder. He is the mold. He is the potter. God says I should tell someone he is the potter. He has all the spare parts. He is the creator. He has all the, the spare parts. God says he is molding back your heart into shape. He is molding back your heart into shape. He is molding back your life into shape. He is putting back everything that was missing. He is putting back everything that was stolen. He is putting back everything that was red. Everything that was red. Red doesn't only mean that they, 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 they slept with you by force. Red also red, red generally means to take by force. To take by force. To take by force. Someone your dignity was taken by force. Someone your personality was snatched by force. Someone your your self-esteem was taken away by force. Your self-confidence was taken away by force. Your trust in God was taken away. Someone, the devil, the enemy took something away from you. God says there is a restoration in the name of Jesus. God is restoring you in the name of Jesus. God is restoring you in the name of Jesus. God is restoring you in the name of Jesus. God says I should tell someone, double for your trouble. Double for your trouble. Double for your trouble. I hear God saying, as many as I hear, marriages, marriages are coming to you. Kingdom spouse, God says he is come he, by reason of this healing. You are ready to encounter your kingdom spouse. By reason of this healing, you are ready to encounter your kingdom spouse. By reason of this, you are ready to encounter your kingdom spouse. Kala zobranda la rusha kaliana rasia. God says the reason why you have not encountered them up till now is because you needed to deal with this situation. You needed to, uh, to have healing. You needed deliverance from this. You needed to deliver your mind, change your mindset. God says there is nothing wrong with you. Stop feeling like you are not enough. Stop feeling like you need something. Stop feeling like you lack something. God says you are enough. You are created in God's image and likeness. God says there is no higher God says you are whole, nothing shaken, nothing broken. God says he is mending the broken pieces and he's putting them back in place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Begin to thank God for what he has done. Begin to thank God for what he has done. Begin to thank him. Say thank you, Lord. Thank you for touching me. Thank you for healing me. Thank you for this encounter. Thank you. Thank you. God says someone, you just encountered Jehovah Shalom. As you leave this session, you are about to be in so much peace that even all those who have been close to you and knew the hurt you were going through, they are going to ask you what happened. Because the kind of peace and joy that you are going to be radiating is going to be a shock to you. Because for a while you have not been that peaceful, you have not been that joyful. God says someone just encountered Jehovah Shalom. That you are leaving this place, nothing missing, nothing broken. Hallelujah. Father, thank you. Thank you for always hearing us. Thank you for always bringing to pass your word. Thank you because you are alert and active watching to fulfill this word. Thank you because we are leaving this place whole. We are leaving this place transformed. We are leaving this place better. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the testimonies. I hear a lot of testimonies after this session. I hear a lot of testimonies. Many of you are about to testify. Thank you so much. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. I hope someone was blessed by this session. I hope you were blessed. Were you blessed? Please come in. Let me know you were blessed by this session. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to have our next session. Our next live session will be at 4 a.m. We are having daily prayers, 4 a.m. GMT plus one. 4 a.m. GMT plus one. I would love to still have you guys with me. I would love to still have you join me for that prayer and the word. The word of God is ever fresh. The word of God is ever ready. And I am always ready to speak as commanded. I am just a servant in the hands of God. Please do join me at 4 a.m. Let's have another awesome time in the presence of God. I hope to see you again at 4 a.m. And please, if this blessed you, please do share. And if you have not subscribed, please do subscribe to the channel. And make sure you ring the notification bell so that every time 
a new video a new content is uploaded you will be notified make sure you like and share the videos also comment at the end of this video of this live session please comment let me know if i if i was a blessing if god indeed used me to bless you when you have testimonies if you have testimonies from this please let me know let me know if you have any testimony and i am open for counseling i am very open for counseling i am open for counseling I'm very open for counseling. So please, you can send me an email. Amen. I am glad you were blessed. I'm so glad you were blessed. You can send me an email. Send me an email. Send me an email so that if you need personal counseling session, personal prayer session, all you need to do is just to send me an email. That's all that you need to do is just to send me an email. The email address is purpose.maritabliss at gmail.com. Please, Mr. Judge, can you type that? One word or small letters, purpose.maritabliss at gmail.com. Please type that and pin it. Let someone know. My email address is purpose.maritabliss at gmail.com. Purpose.maritabliss. Send me an email. Comment. Leave a comment. Invite someone to join. Invite someone to subscribe. Invite someone to join our live sessions. If they have been a blessing to you, then they will certainly be a blessing to someone else. Amen. I'm going to leave the email at the end of this session at the end of this live session i'm going to under this video i'm going to leave the email so that if you want to send me an email you can get in touch with me i will respond to you i'll pray with you personally i'll counsel you if you need any counseling i am available i'm a, I'm a relationship and marriage counselor i'm a relationship and marriage coach i can hold your hand through this journey Whatever you doubt, whatever you need, you need, if it has to do with your spiritual work or with your relationship, I am available. I am here because you are there. Amen. Now let's share the grace. Let's have our benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you and may he be gracious to you. Amen. God bless you. Shalom.